here with uh, Coach Primo of the Varsity Saber Cats. You're you're going in your fourth season or fifth season? Yeah, fourth season. Fourth season. Coach. Uh, I've been with the program for close to ten years now. The fourth season head coach. And can you talk a little bit, you and your staff, on how you guys are prepared going into this season? What it's taking to get to this point? Yes. Yeah, so first of all, I mean I couldn't be happier with my coaching staff. Uh, we have a great group of uh, young coaches who all have experience being at the CIS youth sports level, um, really knowledgeable. So we spent a lot of time in the off season um, looking back at the previous season and, and how we can improve and how we can get better and kind of get over that hump. We've had a couple of seasons where we've lost in the conference championship. So take a look back and see how we can improve. One of the things we, we look back in the last couple of years is we had came off a slow start. So how do we prepare? And one of the things getting here as early as we can to the indoor facility um, and uh, maybe adjust our install, install schedule from an offensive standpoint to be ready for game one. Um, and then a lot of our time is spent recruiting, reaching out to the players um, and, and making sure we have a, a roster, a full roster with a lot of depth and what you need here gonna push for a long playoff run. And I'd like to say we were just talking to Isaac Smithers uh, before and uh, both seasons like you just mentioned just haven't gotten over that hump into the final. With this group of kids what's it gonna take to get them starting May 18th against Brantford to get to that? Yeah one of the things is that so I mentioned the slow start it gave us uh, both road games so if we win some of those home games early in the season um, to start the season those games might have been played here in Sault Ste. Marie and we all know with the travel it's sometimes hard. So hopefully a, a quick start will provide us with a home playoff advantage. Uh, come playoff time would be nice. Um, but I think the veteran leadership is going to be huge. Um, returning quite a few guys from last year, which will help us a lot. I mean, when you've been in the, you know, the situation before, it becomes a little bit easier. Um, so we're prepared, hopefully a little bit better this year. Uh, around, and it's just preparation for the coaches and breaking down the field and having our guys ready to go. And you've had a few junior varsity players come up, graduated from that program, who've had exceptional high school uh, so far, can you talk a little bit about how you've been impressed with a few of them? Yeah, we're, we're excited with the group that's coming up from the JV team. They had, a, they had a good year last year as well, making a run and just we'll get to the, the JV championship. Um, obviously, two of the guys that stand out were two of the big weapons on offense for the JV team last year, Tyler Breen and uh, Nick Pagnotta. Um, they're, they're great. I mean, they're dynamic athletes, right? You see as soon as they step on the turf here, they're, they're pretty dynamic and uh, they're uh, exciting to watch. So we expect quite a bit out of them and we, we also have some uh, Defensive guys um, coming up in the JV program. Uh, Ethan Fawcett, uh, he was the Seattle last time on the defensive side. Uh, had quite a few picks in the secondary there. So looking for some of those guys to come up. And it is a big jump, but we're looking for those guys to come up and make an impact right away. And we, we had talked off camera about a little bit about recruiting and kids going to college. And we just talked to Isaac about him going to Holland College and PEI. Um, being in the north, it's a little bit harder to sometimes exposure, but you, you had mentioned four or five guys going on to from the Sabercat program. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we're excited. We have uh, the Isaac going to Holland, which we're super excited about. It's a, it's a great opportunity. Um, and for other players potentially as well that don't go to university route, that still want to continue their career. So we're excited to have Isaac going to Holland College. Um, as well, we've got four other guys going to U Sports. We've got two players that are going to be going to Windsor, uh, Julian Joya and um, uh, Paul Tano, Zach Paul Tano. And uh, then we have um, Hunter Lambert Russo who's going to be heading to CNFX in the fall, and Nick Fowler who's going to be McMaster. So we're excited. We have four guys. Um, obviously, guys are going to play through drills this summer. Um, it is a little bit harder to be in the North. You don't get uh, many scouts uh, or recruiters at our, at our games, per se, but when we do travel to Southern Ontario, you do see them there. We do stay in constant contact with quite a few scouts throughout the country. Um, it's a little easier now with YouTube and highlight videos and social media to, to, get, to get out there and get seen. Um, it's, it's a lot easier now than it was maybe even five, ten years ago. Um, so yeah, we, we reach out and uh, we get coaches contacting us and asking us for our roster of guys that are ready to go. And and, uh, and that's kind of part of what we do, what we do, is to help these guys get that exposure and, and if they want to play at the next level, to, to provide them that the coaching and the opportunity to, to showcase their skills at a high level. And with with the OFC, I guess the, the rule with 19 years old, get carried to where in the States, a lot of times they're going to university at the age of 17. Yeah. That 19 for, I guess, the kids who are a little bit late, late developers, that really helps. Not just your program, but the whole league's program. It yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, when you're young men, the, the impact, like, the difference between 17 and 19 is usually pretty big and developing physically wise, especially when you want to play at the sports level. Um, being in the weight room is huge and, and having that physical strength uh, helps you compete at that next level. Um, so it is a great opportunity um, for guys to, to showcase their skills and, and go the university route. Um, I know in the States, like I said, you have guys when they're pretty young. Um, this gives the opportunity to guys to keep playing. Uh, even if they're out of high school, you have some first university kids that are still playing that may want to go on or may not, but this gives an opportunity to keep playing until, uh, until they get out. 
And final question, and some being four years for you as a coach, and you have a few alumni that are actually going to be getting ready for the combine, the CFL combine. How does that feel, and what does it say about the SaberCat program yeah, overall? It's, it's definitely exciting. We had uh, two uh, former SaberCats get drafted last year, or two years ago, um, Alex Morrison and Hoover. So it was great to see those guys get drafted and, and make it into the, uh, the CFL, which is great. And this year we had Lyle Freccia, uh, who's a former player, and he's been out and helped coach a couple of times. Uh, it's great for the program. These guys can look around and see players that played not that long ago um, making an impact at U Sports and making uh, an impact and playing in the CFL. So it's pretty exciting for these guys to see that it is possible. Um, you do have to put in the work. It doesn't just come that easy. Those guys are exceptional athletes and they're the hardest workers, some of the hardest workers we've ever had in this program. So it takes a lot, but uh, I know it's great for these guys to see that. We get them out as much as we can to come help out of practice. Some of these guys, um, both who Grant Morrison have come back and helped out. It's great for these guys to see them, see them and give them back. And, playing in CFL, so it's definitely exciting. And with, with mentioning that, as like Ray, who they say over there is coaching, he's played it. It's just nice to see this alumni giving back to you guys and helping, eh? Yeah, our entire coaching staff is based on alumni pretty much. Um, everyone's played in the program. Um, Ray, not that long ago, he stepped in right away every after continued uh, right after he finished playing and he uh, was a great coach right off the bat. Um, but all these guys are guys that played the program, they've seen the benefits of the program and how it's helped them and that's why they come back now and help out. And these guys are these guys are awesome. I couldn't be happier with my coaching staff and the work that they do. Well thank you very much and uh, hopefully uh, I can talk to you uh, May 18th after your first win of the season against Cranford.